now relaxation secrets welcome to miss blue asmr's youtube channel for those of you who have not previously followed my channel i have a system where in the beginning of almost every video I do, I name another ASMR channel, which I have a list of. I have, I have a list of ASMR channels that I, that I gather together and I write in a book which I call my support system list. So, in the beginning of every video, I name one channel from that list in the attempts of supporting other ASM artists like myself. Some of these, some of these channels are beginning channels, some of them are a little less new and more used to um, what they're doing and some of them are by now already rooted channels that I enjoy and uh, think need support so today's channel that I will be naming is Georgia ASMR and if you would like to go and check out her channel the link is down in the description of this video I'm sure Georgia ASMR would be very happy to receive your visit and possibly any comments you might have, any likes, and any subscriptions. So please feel free to go and click the link down in the description box of this video and check that channel out. Again, for those of you who are not accustomed to my channel, um, I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, about myself. I'm an ASM artist, but within um, that art, I like to be able to combine my various passions in ASMR videos. And one of these passions that I have is ancient Egypt. I got this. Uh, from my mother. We are both uh, Egypt, Egypt maniacs and have been, f for me at least, um, ever since I was a little girl. And I believe that my mother also um, has been an Egypt maniac ever since she was a little girl too. Um, so yeah, I like to be able to combine my passions with ASMR. So, today's video is going to be on that subject of ancient Egypt, and I will be teaching you some of the basics of hieroglyphs. So, with this video, you will be able to, at the end, write your own name in hieroglyphs, but this video is not going to cover the full extent of learning the full, um, how to say, the full, um, I won't be teaching you everything there is to know about hieroglyphs, I will simply be um, covering 
a few simple rules about the hieroglyphic language and uh, the alphabet but it won't be um, it won't be like a full uh, you won't get a full understanding of it because I don't have a full understanding of it I, I'm just going to explain a few basics and go over the alphabet so with hieroglyphs there are a few things that you have to know about this language first thing you need to know is that in hieroglyphs um, the verbs come first so you put the verb in the front of the phrase and hieroglyphs are used phonetically to represent uh, to represent sounds but also pictures to help us determine the meanings of the words they also use determinatives because they help us determine the meaning of a word and hieroglyphs are also ideograms which are hieroglyphs used pictorially so to resume there's like three main rules to um, hieroglyphs and the first one is that hieroglyphs are phonetic which means that they represent sound secondly determinatives So we've got determinatives, which come at the end of a word to clarify its meaning. And last but not least, we have the fact that they are ideograms. Which is a picture. Which represents a concept. So those are the three big rules that you have to take into account with hieroglyphs. And there's also Another little rule. I'll come back on that a little bit later. Because you're, if I just say it now, you're not going to understand it. I'm still going to write it down. which is two short symbols can be put on top of each other. Now, I will explain this a little bit more in detail uh, later on in the video. So, to start off, I'm going to, basically I'm going to be showing you how uh, to write more or less the full alphabet 
but you have to take into account that um, hieroglyphs was a very different language uh, way of writing and every letter of the Arabic language of the English language um, the Occidental <laughs> Occidental alphabet um, every letter does not necessarily have um, a corresponding hieroglyph that goes with it so so it's it's different but uh, there are certain letters that have corresponding hieroglyphs so that's what I'm going to be showing you today in this video so to start off we have the letter A and uh, this A is because you've got different um, intonations of A's but this one is the A it's an uh, it's an ah sound it's not A as in A it's ah so it's a prolonged type of A um, like in the word balmy. So this A is the prolonged um, A, like for example in the word balmy, the R sound. And you do this by drawing its bird. So you've got the top of its head there, you draw a line that is a little bit slanted and you do a sort of curved thing down there, then you draw a line down this way which stops a little bit higher up than the other line. Here you do a little line there and join up the bird like that. So you've got the beak here, that's the beak of the bird. And then what you do is you continue that line a little further. And you do another line there. And the two little feet. And that there and that there is your the, the letter A but representing the sound ah. You will see a little later on in the video that there are different ways to do the letter A. A depending on which kind of sound you're looking for. So that is how you'd write the letter A with an, a more prolonged and deep uh, sound to it. I also would like to <coughs> precise that um, this way of doing, of writing hieroglyphs is a more simplistic way there are more elaborated ways of doing them. Um, I just found it simpler to do them this way. It's easier to remember and it's, it's not as complicated as doing the really um, elaborated hieroglyphs. Um, but feel free to look up um, some videos of where they actually do the more elaborated um, hieroglyphs. So the next letter is the letter B, and this one is very simple. It's just a foot. Again, uh, I'm doing the more simplistic version of hieroglyphs, but there are more elaborated ways to do them. So this letter, the letter B, is just 
just a foot go down like that do the little line at the bottom and just join it up like that and it represents a foot so that is the letter B next up we have letter C and again this is one of the letters that you can uh, do differently depending on which type of C you're going for, which type of sound because you've got different um, types of uh, C's like you've got the, the CK sounding and the CK sound and you've got the uh, the simple um, ch sound that you would get with a C and an H um, but again I'm going to come back on, on those a little later this C in particular uh, represents the C that you would find in by using the letters K and H Trying to trying to think of an instance where this would be valid. I've got it. Let me change pens. I need a slimmer pen. So this is the sound that you would get in the word cake. The hard. C K. And so again this one is very simple. A lot of them are simple. So all it is is you draw a circle and you put some lines in the middle of it. It doesn't really matter how many lines you put in the middle of it. Sometimes it can be three, four, five. That's really not what's important. The importance is just the fact that there is a circle with lines in the middle. And that is your letter C representing the sound K H, like in cake, the C sound, the K sound. Next, we have the letter D. The letter D is in the word daddy. And you do this by drawing, it's a hand basically. So what you do is you draw an oval shape, put a little triangle there on the end with a little thing poking up there. So you've got the round part which is the sort of uh, the palm of your hand, you've got the triangle which is the wrist and a little bit poking up there is supposed to be a thumb and that is your D representing the sound D as in daddy next now this one I had quite a bit of trouble with because it's a little bit confusing I had to do quite a bit of research to find this to understand fully understand this one so what we're looking for um, is the letter E, but um, but it's um, a little bit hard to explain because the E in the ancient Egypt, ancient Egyptian, sorry, um, represents the sound A. 
So this is another A sound, um, but it's not the strong, uh, short A that we had in like balmy, it's the softer and shorter, um, no, so, uh, I'm sorry, it's the uh, softer and uh, more prolonged um, sound of A like you would find in the word I'm just going to put an A there because um, it's the A sound um, like you would find in the word or in the name, sorry Aim so it's a more soft and prolonged sound of A like um, you could possibly uh, alternatively write the word Amy using an E, it would sort of be the same, Amy. So this is the soft A sound, on the contrary to the hard and short um, A from Barmy. Barmy, Amy. Barmy, Amy. Do you see the difference? And you do this by drawing. Um, it's supposed to be an arm. So what you do is you draw a line at the bottom. You do a little triangle shape there. And just a little um, thing to the top there and it gives you sort of the shape of an arm this part would be the upper arm and it's like an arm outstretched like that sort of and that is the sound of soft A which is the letter E in ancient Egyptian next we have another little bit of confusing letter. So it's the letter F, but um, the same symbol is also used to represent the letter V. And so Examples of words that you would use this symbol in. So it would be the F from like in, sorry, it's the F sound like in the word fear, and for the V, it is the V sound like in the word. Riper. And so you do this by drawing a snake, a viper snake. Very fitting. And you do this just by doing a little line like that. You've got the do the circle and then go down and up a little bit again. Give it an eye. and two little antennas and that is your letter F and V like in the words fear and viper so next we have the letter G as in the, it's the G sound from like the word gum so it's a strong G and you do this by drawing first off a little top bit, then you've got to give it some side bits, a little rounded bottom, and a little triangle in the middle, and that is the symbol for the, little, for the letter G. G as in gum. Next we have a 
Und das war Hedge. And there are two ways to um, to write the letter H, so I'm going to put both of them. So this H is um, this H is a soft H, as in the word hopped. He hopped from the branch, and this H. is more pronounced H like in the words half or the name Hank see the difference hot half Hank this is more of an abrupt H and this is more of a prolonged H and you represent these. This one is very simple. It's literally just that. It's just, and it's not, I haven't made it very straight, but it's literally just you go up, you go across, you go down, you come to the left, and then inwards. It's a little bit like a square spiral. And the second one is a little bit more difficult. Basically, you're going to do a little circle like that, then come down, and then another circle, and come down, then another one, and just go up like that, and add a little tail. And that is your second H sound. And some people have been known to just do it sort of like that, and then adding that on the end. But as you can see, they turn out differently, and um, I just advise you to do it the proper way, the way the ancient Egyptians did it. Let's try that one again. So instead of doing it this way, which doesn't turn out very well, it doesn't look very well, the ancient Egyptians did it this way. Do one circle like that, one circle like that, one circle, a half circle like that, and just add a little bit on the end. Okay, go with that one. So those are the two ways of doing the letter H. And you determine the which symbol to use by what kind of sound you're looking to make. Next, we have the letter I. which is represented by the same symbol as the letter Y. And this is the I sound, like in the word like in the word sitting sound. It's not an I sound, sitting. you do this by drawing, you start here, you go a little bit like that and then you go down, you curve down, here you do the same thing but smaller, I think I didn't make that long enough, you've got to make the top bit a little bit longer, and then a little curved part to join 
the two bits and that is the letter I and Y as in the word sitting I sound in sitting next we have the letter J and it is the J um, it's the J sound so like um, when you have the letters D and J together it's the J sound it's not like um, how do you explain it? Um, It's not a, it's the j sound, not j, 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 j. And I'm trying to think, it's like, um, it's like the word DJ. Which is a little weird because that is the the whole word is only two letters, but it's it's a word the, um, to be a DJ. Some people they make a living from being a DJ, so the J in DJ is the perfect example for the J sound. D J J. And you do this by drawing. Again, it's a snake but drawn differently. So you've got the head here, it's supposed to make that a little bit round. Then you come down vertically like that, come down again, and that's your j sound which is the letter J. Next we have the letter K but it also represents the letter C. Yes, we have another C and it is the K C sound like in the words king and cup the k sound which is slightly different from the k k h sound that i showed you previous and so this K and C is shown by I personally think it's a little water basin because you've got the sort of rounded part that would be the basin and a little carrying handle and that is the K sound, K and C, like in the words king and cup. Next we have the letter L, which I don't think needs explaining, it's L like the name Laura, L. And you do this by drawing a lion. So you've got to draw a little rectangle. You can give him a little nose if you want. You do um, an 
oval shape for the body, a circle shape for the mane, starting at the bottom of the right hand side of the oval, just a little stick up there like that, like a little on the end of the tail, and two little lines at the bottom for the feet, so it's a lion laying down, and that is the helm. Next, we have the letter M, which again has two ways of doing it, but I think that the difference between the two has nothing to do with what type of sound you're trying to to write, but more um, to do with what time and history um, it was at the time of use. That's what I gathered from my research anyway. So you can basically do it both ways, and both are correct. So, and, and the first one is a little bit more complicated. I'll start with the less complicated one. Okay, so the first one is just simply one line like that. One line going down, slanted to the left, and back again. And that's the letter M. But there's a second one which is more complicated, and it represents an owl. So you do a little half square at the top, you come down, curve down like that, do a little line there, up, and you join those two together from about here, put a line downwards, a little foot, and a beak. That is the letter M. So you can use either one of these for the letter M and they would both be correct. Next we have the letter N, which you do simply by drawing zigzags. <laughs> you go. That is the letter N. And it doesn't really matter how many um, squiggles you do, just that there are like maybe more than three or four. That's the letter N, and it represents water. It's like waves. Next we have the letter P. And you do this by simply drawing a rectangle. Some people do it as a square and some people do it as a rectangle. I'm not too sure which is correct, so I'm going to go ahead and say that you can do either a square or a rectangle. And that's the letter P. So next we have the letter Q, and that is the Q that represents the sound KW, as in as in the word Queen. So it's the Qu sound, like quail. And you do this by drawing a little slope like that and joining them together with a sort of L shape and it's uh, it represents like a, a hill 
the slope and that's the FQ which is the Q sound like uh, in Queen Next we have the letter R which you do by drawing the top half circle and the bottom half circle which doesn't make a full whole circle <laughs> it represents, I think it represents a loaf of bread I'm not sure about that but yeah it's sort of like um, an oval shape but you, you must, you, you can't just draw an oval you must do the first half first, the first uh, you must do the, the, the top part first and then the bottom part like an eye shape next we have the letter S and you do this by drawing again this is one of those things that is better if you draw them a certain way like the uh, ancient scribes did so you first do two little lines like that and this line you put along at the bottom and then you just join the two together like that and it gives you sort of like a cane shape and that's the letter S next we have the letter T which is done by just drawing a half circle and a line and there you've got your letter T the next letter is U and it's the U sound that you would find in the word smooth or moo like a, a cow moos <laughs> so that is the so it's sort of like um yeah an abrupt mm. no it's a more a longer moo instead of you and you do that by drawing again this one is a little bit more complicated you draw a circle you go down and then come around there like that with a long long line then you draw like a little belly a little bit curved you come down here Two little lines there and a bar across for the feet give them a little wing and a beak and it's a little baby quail and that is the letter U representing the sound OO as in smooth and MOO Next we have the letter W, but um, yeah we have the letter W, like in the word wing, the W sound from the word wing, but it's represented by the exact same hieroglyph as the U. I'm just going to do it again because it was a little bit more complicated than the, the rest so just to show you again you've got your circle you come down you do a long line at the bottom 
to them is slightly tummy and two little lines at the bottom for his feet line underneath little beak and his wing and that is your W the wing sound and it's the same as the letter U the next letter is letter Y now I know we already did one of the Y's we already did a Y previously with the I but it's a different sound this Y represents the E like in the word feeding the E sound in feeding as opposed to the Y that we did before with the I which was the I sound of sitting so to do this one it's basically the same as before only in double. I'll explain. So you've got your top part, curve it down, then you do your little curve down there and uh, join it together. And next to it, you do exactly the same thing. And those two together represent the letter Y from like the word feeding, the I in feeding, the E in feeding. Next we have the letter Z. It is done by drawing a line and two bars and that's your letter Z next um, we have some um, they're not letters as such um, like in our alphabet but more a combination of letters which make up a sound so the first one is the sound sh as in shush <laughs> or as in like when people put one finger in front of their mouth and go shh that's this sound and you draw it by drawing a rectangle a rectangle like that and putting two little lines in the middle and that's your sound sh next we have the t c h sound like in the word check check it's like a ch but with a t sound in front of it so instead of it being instead of it being like shake it's there's this um instead of it representing like just a sh sound get a T in front of it, shake, check. This one would be represented by the one that I just showed you before and this one by this symbol and all it is, you draw two little circles, one on top of the other and you join it together with a sideways U and that is your sound CH 
like in the word check and not like in the word shake. And last but not least, we have another sh sound. So it's the ch sound that you would get in the word chocolate. Ch chocolate sound. And you do that by drawing this one is honestly a bit weird. It's um, you draw a circle, you cut the circle in half, you do a curved top part, and then you come back round and make it flatter. Now I'm going to use my slip in my tipped pen for this one because, and you've got to draw like flower petals all around it. And from my research, um, what I found was that this hieroglyph represents a cow and udder, and it's udder. But I honestly have trouble seeing that. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's the, that's how you do the CH sound from the word chocolate. And that is, to my knowledge, the full Egyptian um, alphabet, the, the full, um, the full translation not quite sure how to say it, is that the full translation of um, like the English alphabet into ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. Um, so yeah, that's the alphabet. Now, this part of the video is aimed at helping you remember all of the different hieroglyphs which represent um, modern day alphabet letters and I found this technique on a YouTube channel in which um, in the video that I watched the man was uh, explaining hieroglyphs and how to do them and um, what they represented and everything and he put this um, into a song to help people learn better. <laughs> uh, I can't remember the name of the channel that I saw it on. Uh, I'll do a little bit of research before posting the video and I'll see if I can find that, the channel that it was on. And uh, if I do, I'll put it down in the description to cite my references. So, yes. The person put it in the form of a song. I'm going to be doing it a cappella, um, so it's not going to be perfect. Um, but it is kind of fun, so I'm going to try my best. Here we go. On a hat farm day, a vulture was sitting by a weed leaf, feeding on the two weed leaves, when the man with an outstretched arm spread the wings of a baby quail that bobbed near the man's foot that was standing on a purple square map, when a fearless one finds her, mesmerized and mummified down, that hopped through the shelter, he was nesting near the water, and in his red mouth he had half a hank of flank, a twisted flank, that he locked up in a shady hole, a chocolate cow and udder, and a chocolate cow udder and tail, he was standing under a folded cloth, 
thing in the shape of a rectangle pool on top of a queen size hill, a king size cup, golden jars on a jelly stand, tasty bread held in a cheek ring by a dirty man with a dirty hand and an edgy cobra. So you can use this song to help you remember each of the each of the hieroglyphs. I just can't get over how that song is so ridiculously hard to say. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to mention that the song is called Mission from Ra. So I'm going to transliterate my channel name into hieroglyphs. So, we start with Miss. Now, if you remember correctly, the you have two ways of doing the M. But I'm going to decide. I'm going to do the more complicated one. So it's a bird. You need the head. Go down like that. Put your arm there. A bit curved piece there, and then you join the two together. Then give him a foot. Then you give him a foot, a second foot, you join them both together, then you give him a beak, and that's your letter M. Now you want an eye, if you remember, do a little leaf, that's the eye, and now you want two S's. And that is the word miss. Now for blue, you want a B. If you remember correctly, that's a foot. Then the letter L, which is a lion. So you do this, this square on the rectangle. Do the circle for the mane, the oval shape for the body, a little tail, and two legs. And that's the letter L. Now for the letter U, which is the baby quail. So you draw the head, you go down like that, draw a little one there, join the two together, giving him a little belly. You do the two little feet, give him something to stand on. You do his wing and his beak, and that is the letter U. Now for the E. I'm not even sure that you would need an E on the end of this because of the way the U is pronounced. But I'm going to put an E on the end of there anyway because it's transliteration. Translating names from lang one language to another so just, I'm just going to put an E on the end of there which is, if you remember, an arm And there we have it, Miss Blue. So I'm going to do ASMR. Now, if you remember correctly, um, the A sound for like in ASMR is a more soft um, A, which is represented, um, which is the same as the letter E um, in hieroglyphs. So. In this instance, instead of using 
the proper A or use an E, which is an arm. There we have our sort of A for ASMR. Now for the S. And for the last two letters in ASMR, um, I'm going to use the second way of doing an M because it fits well with the rule that I'm going to apply here. Um, I think I mentioned it at the beginning of the video. Uh, when two hieroglyphs are small, you can put them on, one on top of the other, so that fits very well here. So I'm going to do the M. That's the simpler way of doing an M. And R, which is just that. Well, sort of. So we've got... Miss Blue A S M R. There we go. I'm going to do a couple more just to emphasize. So I'm going to transliterate the word whispers. And the word tingles. So, for the word whispers, you need the W, which will also take into account the letter H because in the hieroglyphs there is no need to add silent um, letters. So, the WH will be so the um, WH will be represented by our little quail bird. Cute. And next we need the letter I. So we do our little wave. So we've got our I. Now the letter S. The letter P The letter E And just underneath I'm going to put the letter R, because they're small and they can be put on top of each other. And instead of using an S, because in this case the S at the end of whispers is pronounced Z, the Z sound, I'm going to use the letter Z, which is again a small so we can do it just underneath these ones. There we go. Whispers. So for the word tingles, we need our letter T, which is just a half circle, and we need an I. need an N and I need a G 
An L. Um, yeah, so normally you would need uh, an ES to put on the end of tingles, but again, as hieroglyphs are all about sounds, uh, we don't need an ES, we need just a Z. So I'm just going to put them under the line. So there we go. We have the word. Whispers and the word tingles. So, in this small part of the video, I'm going to be doing a little uh, side note um, to explain that uh, the ancient Egyptians had a specific way of automatically letting the onlooker know um, that what is written in the hieroglyphs is. Um, mentioning a pharaoh's name and all they did for this let's say these are hieroglyphs let's pretend all they did was outline the said hieroglyphs and this is called a cartouche and it would automatically let the person looking know that What's written in it is the name of a pharaoh. So for this, we are going to do a little example. Again, I'm going to use again I'm going to use my channel name. So I'm gonna draw the outline first. note, I'm not actually a pharaoh. This is purely for <laughs> demonstration purpose. So we need our um, So there we've got Miss Blue and we need our quail. Baby quail. There we go. And now E. We have
Call to should come to be more rounded here. We get the time of hiding. So if in the ancient Egypt someone saw this, love it. So if someone saw this in the ancient Egypt, they would know that this cartouche is talking about Pharaoh's nephew or the last. It's not the case. It's not the case, but you know, for argument's sake, they just that cartouche. So there we go. Now you know the basics of hieroglyphs. As I said in the beginning of the video, obviously this video will not allow you to be able to read and write fluently ancient Egyptian, uh, because that is something that I myself don't know, so I can't teach you. But those are the basics um, for you to be able to, for instance, write your own name in hieroglyphs. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, so yeah, those are the basics. Uh, to the full extent of my knowledge, what I have uh, shown you is true. I don't think there is anything that is untrue that I put in the video. And if any of it is untrue, it really wasn't conscious on my part. So I really believe that everything that I said in the video is true. So I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was a little bit educational for you. Um, again, this series of Egyptian videos are mainly uh, aimed at people who, like myself, have a very great interest in Egypt and Egypt's history. So if this isn't the, if this isn't the case for you, then obviously this series of videos, you know, just isn't for you. But anyway, um, thank you for watching. I would like to remind you that the link to the channel I named in the beginning of the video, which is Georgia ASMR, um, the link is down in the description of the video. Um, where you will also find my Facebook account and my Instagram account, all reserved for my channel. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you find it educational, and uh, I wish you lots of relaxation and peace of mind and tingles. <laughs> Those are all things that you can wish someone who is... Uh, watching ASMR, so thanks for watching, see you in the next video, and until then, take care, bye bye.